right, guys, welcome to episode six, I believe, of Social Skirmish. Uh, I'm Euphorix. Joining me this week is, well, yeah, this week is a 400-pound whale, or Molly, and, of course, Siren or Ray. Uh, don't talk yet, guys. We can't actually hear you. I haven't, I haven't turned up your volumes yet. But what we're going to be talking about today is some Halo 4 leaks, some pretty fun stuff, a barn video, some screenshots. Um, you know, this, that, and the other. So, guys, how are you doing? Good. Good? Pretty Excited. good. Ray, how, how's your gel bone for the leaks going? It's solid? Yeah, it's good. Going I mean, steady? I can't complain. Like, what, over 30 pictures, two new videos? I can't complain with E3 next week, too? Yeah. I'm excited. E3. And I was we're gonna... kind of hoping for high resolution, but... I think I think there's some conspiracy theories to be had there, but you know we can we can delve into it maybe another time. But yeah, E3 is also coming up. There's tons of exciting news uh, regarding that. Tons of stuff is going to be happening. All I can really say is um, pay careful attention to you know HaloCouncil.com. I know uh, Ray and myself are going to do our best to keep uh, you guys updated on all the Halo 4 info that we have um, and all the info that we have that we're not supposed to have stuff like that. You know. The, the juicy good bits. And, you know, what is there? Let's start off with the screenshots um, that we, we got leaked. Uh, the first, I'm going to throw it up on stream for you guys, and it's in the notes if you guys want to open it um, at home. At home. Uh, so that's... The viewers at home. Yeah, the viewers at home, and you guys in, in Skype can see it as well. So there's the, the infamous kill cam screenshot, right? And mm -hmm. what can we say about this? You know, well, first we'll get your basic impressions. Molly, what do you think about kill cams in Halo? Just quick and easy. Thoughts? Um, you, like, does this screenshot out here? Or I'm just the idea of kill cams in general? Uh, oh, I like them. Me too. I like them. Ray? I really do like it because that may hint towards spectator mode, which is a popular feature in other games that feature that. And you can probably guess what game that is. Yeah, so we I'm, all know. So I'm, I really like it. I, I wonder if we're ever gonna go back to the typical option, or is that gonna be for sure the final thing that happens when you die? Yeah, it's. I mean, I know in a couple of the other screenshots as well. I, I won't talk about these, but if you want to see them, uh, HaloCouncil.com. Can't say it enough, right? Uh, they're up there, and it does feature what appears to be the traditional death screen with the name blurred out at the bottom, but we don't know if that's like a spectator type scenario or a theater or what, but there's definitely um, kill cams in the press X to respawn game variants. And, and another... Yeah, go ahead, Ray. Sorry. Yeah, and another thing with that is, how is that going to work for the competitive community? Because in Halo 3, we got that we could flip around for other people's screen and see what's going on to do call out. So is that going to affect us in any way? Yeah, and that's a point I brought up um, in, in a recent video I made regarding these screenshots. Is actually a kill cam is better for competitive play because upon your death, you're provided with less information in regards to the other team's positioning. So in Halo 3 and in Halo Reach, we saw something new with the death screen, right? And the death screen, what it, what it allowed you to do is uh, manipulate the third-person camera on your dead body to sort of look around the map. And you could call out players from there and get more information that you wouldn't be able to see just looking through a first-person perspective. So in Halo 1 and Halo 2, all you were allowed to see was a dead body. You know, it sort of zoomed in on that. So with a kill cam, it's actually more competitive and better for teams to set up because uh, it reveals less about the other team's position. So I actually like uh, a kill cam as opposed to a traditional Halo 3, Halo Reach death screen. And I don't know if, if Molly has something. It, like, do you agree with that? Would, it, would you rather have the death screen come back or the kill cam come back? Well, I don't... I don't have any experience really with kill cams. I mean, all I, all I know is, like, Reach and a little bit of 3. So, I mean, it looks interesting. But I can't, like, compare one or the other, you know, with, a, with any kind of real knowledge. Molly's the the pure. Just <laughs> yes. Not really. I'm, you know, a noob. No. <laughs> you're, you may be a noob, but you're 
I'm a reach scrub. I'm a reach scrub. You're like an educated, like well informed, open minded, logical, Casual. rational noob, yeah. if anything. But yeah. Okay, here's here's my big thing on on kill cams, and Ray Ray hinted at this. So now with kill cams, we have the ability to literally see every other player's first person perspective, right? And this was something yeah. that's never been able to be done in Halo Theater mode at all. In Halo 3 Theater, I don't even think we could see the reticle of the other player. We could only see the third person. But Halo Reach allowed us to see sort of an over-the-shoulder third person and still see the reticle, uh, but not a standard first-person view. So with the implementation of this kill cam, one could hypothesize that this could be pointing towards the ability to allow spectator mode, um, such as you know a Call of Duty or a Gears of War, because you can see the first-person perspective of everyone on that's playing in the match, you know, period. And that's one of the most exciting things for me. And we'll go to Ray first. What do you think? Do you think this is a good indication of spectator mode? I think it's hitting towards it, and I can't see why they can't do it, because even if they don't, like, I'm trying to think about it, and if they do, theater is back, would that mean we can switch between other people's first-person point of view instead of, the, you know, the classic third-person, whatever they do for other players? So I'm going to guess it's for that. It has to be. Why else would they do it? Hopefully. Yeah. I, like, and, and hopefully it went one way or the other. Like, they implemented this first-person spectator mode, and then, then they said, oh, well, since we did this, we can do kill cams. Or it went the other way, and they said, um, now that we have kill cams, we can actually do this spectator mode. And that's sort of my, my wish list. Now, um, Molly, does the idea of a spectator mode really entice you? Is that something you wish... Um, Halo 4 had, or are you sort of indifferent? Well, um, I'm not indifferent about it. I mean, I think it'd be awesome for content purposes, obviously, for you like, to be able to do commentaries and various things like that. It probably wouldn't have occurred to me before how important it was, like before I started talking to you guys and, and realizing the importance of video content. But once you do that, then you start seeing why it's so important for content purposes. And, I mean, you know, I want you to be happy, Frank. Thank you. you. Mode. Yes. <laughs> and, and it's not, yeah, go oh, ahead, Ray. Sorry. No, go ahead. I'm yeah, just going to touch it, on something. It's not even that. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but, like, it could put a whole new spin on this because Twitch has exploded in the last year. And with this yeah. possibly happening, like, who knows? And she has been pushing for this kind of UFC kind of thing in the eSports thing, so this could help push Halo back on the circuit and be great for it everyone. It could help the pros and personalities, really, start developing yeah. a better following. And plus, like, yeah. I don't know, I'm the ultimate nerd, but, like, if I get something to eat and I'm chilling in my room and nothing's on TV, maybe hop on the Xbox and see who's playing, watching. Who knows? And... I want to say something about uh, a lot of people, um, let's say in a casual community or, or someone who hears these cries from competitive players for spectator mode and just doesn't get it, right? You think spectator mode, and it's not something that really adds to the fun of the game. When, when I think of fun playing Halo, it, it involves actually playing. Now, why would the competitive scene or, or any content maker be um, pushing for a spectator mode? Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Sundance you know, CEO of MLG, mentioned this on, I believe it was a state of the game, uh, which caters to the StarCraft crowd. But Halo Reach was the most expensive game to stream because of its lack of, of a spectator-type mode where you could switch um, perspectives, first-person perspectives, from one Xbox. So they literally had to have eight times the equipment, um, you know, eight times the, the Xboxes, eight times the TVs, um, eight times the you know point of views, audio, mix amps, everything, just to be able to stream the way we saw Halo 3 and Halo Reach streamed. So with a spectator mode, it allows basically anyone to put on that tournament-like atmosphere with all all the players' perspectives, at the same time saving you know tons and tons of crazy money and. I'm excited so for that. So what it means for local tournaments and lands and... Right, and that's why we don't see as much of a grassroots movement in Halo. Um, you know, I, I heard uh, Dave Walsh on a stream last night say that his biggest thing for Halo, to, in his mind, to keep it alive would be a, an awesome netcode. And that's, that's important, sure. 
Um, you know, obviously being able to play the game online is important. That's, I think that's a uh, Halo Reach plays well online, honestly, compared to Halo 3 because of the, the oh, spread definitely. isn't bothering us. Yeah, it's a lot better. Definitely. So. so I think we can sort of, you know, ease our tension towards netcode, but if we have a spectator mode, um, anyone, you know, locally who, who has the ability to stream, who has an Xbox and a laptop, can basically try to put on a, you know, MLG esque production value stream just out of you know any land center any basement anywhere and that i think it makes it much more accessible yeah it's so. the exposure for halo 4 would absolutely boom if if given a spectator mode and like with that too for competitive gamers at mlg events they only got main stage with some of their older equipment they could pop it out to the feature station and stuff like that so you don't have to miss out on those great matches and i like starcraft the, absolutely also uh not that cut in, but Frankie just said something that the footage we watched was finished code from November. So you're talking what, like seven months ago? Yeah. Wow. That's that's pretty. So crazy by the time the friend. game's released, that footage will be an entire year old. Yes. Pretty cool. All right, so we'll move on to the next screenshot. Let me throw it up for you guys. Now this is the end screen for a green versus yellow CTF loadout screen. Now, green versus yellow, I don't know, kind of look past that. I don't I don't think that's as important, really, of a feature. Um, maybe it's a, you know, I've heard people saying maybe it's a colorblind mode, something. Um, now, the thing I want to note about this is it, it sort of hints at a new type of capture the flag mode. Um, it's kind of blurry, but if you look where it says capture the flag, it says three points, and the game's actually over. They're playing to three. But it's giving him another uh, option to pick his loadouts and his armor abilities and, and that sort of thing. So my, my big questions are, you know, why would there be a loadout screen when the game seems to have ended? And it's the end of the round, so three caps have been done in a best of three scenario. Like, could it be, like, three caps in a best of three built into a match um, for maybe, you know, like yeah, a built-in well, clan mode? If it's kind of like an asymmetrical kind of game type, like you have an offensive and defensive round. Right. That's, uh, I just think it's uh, just not finished, honestly, if I had to guess. Maybe they're still tweaking it. Yeah. It's just lazy coding. If like, I, not lazy coding, but you know what I mean. It's just an unfinished product. They haven't polished it up. Yeah, so, and, Molly, say what you said again, because I wanted to talk about it, but I literally forgot what you said. Oh, maybe it maybe it's like um you know, a lot of people like with asymmetrical game types, you don't have an offensive a defensive round. So maybe like, you know, one of the rounds is over and they get the next one. Or like some kind of invasion type of round, you know. Yeah. And I think that's a uh, a great way to think about it, especially seeing that it's green versus yellow. Um so I think that hints at maybe like a new mode or just a new way to play capture the flag because in the in the previous screenshots we saw of this, it's uh, like a traditional two flag, um, defend your flag, capture the enemy flag, and that's denoted in the UI uh, itself. But the fact that it's over and then he's picking another class, so maybe the switching of sides, something like that. And I think that's great for, um, you know, I, I hate to talk about this so much, but it's just, it's on my mind, like competitive versus casual. It's something that the competitive players would take note of on an asymmetrical map, right? Uh, one side has an advantage because it's not balanced on both sides. I don't know if a casual player would necessarily love this feature or, or be clamoring for this feature, but if this is the feature, I think it's a great thing in regards to balancing you know, all sorts of game modes and, and giving both sides a fair shake, especially in a matchmaking type scenario. That's fine. Well, I mean, Reach, Reach matchmaking has one-sided objectives now. What was that uh, Halo 3 map from the beta I'm thinking of? Uh, Stockpile? Was it, no, from the Halo 3, that beach one, that just had only two uh, game types. Uh, you know what? Headlong? What was it? No, not Headlong. Uh, no. Or, no. High ground, high ground. No, high ground, yeah. Like, I'm, that's what I'm picturing, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. or, and I, I know what Molly was talking about being like the, the one-sided, like one flag CTF or... or um, assault, but it was just weird because there was two flags, so it's like it's sort of combining both of those uh, game modes. Um, and I don't know, like again, just some other things to note. Maybe cap it as many times as you can in a round, or something like that. Well, I think it was. It if, was if, if there's three flags. Yeah. So 
You know, I don't I don't really know officially how it worked. I think it's capped at three because if you look in some of the other screenshots, I don't have them where I can easily bring them up, but it was like tied at 2-2 and you actually saw that bar in the bottom right begin to fill up through the screenshot. So at like one, it was only this, this a third full, obviously, um, then two thirds full with two fly caps. And then at three, it, the bar was completely filled up like you see in that screenshot. So I think it's out of three. Um, so maybe like a, a best of three series to three fly caps, something. I, I, I don't know exactly. But if it's clan mode, that's sick. If that's why, like you can choose your three game types and then play like a yeah. best of three with the same people, that'd be insane. I would love to see more advanced subjective yeah, that requires more hurting. strategies and, you know, that that would produce more rounds and you'd have to mix things up a little bit with the variety. I would love to see that. Yeah. So, I, yeah, that's a lot of speculation towards that screenshot. So don't say, you know, don't take a lot of what we said to heart, but I, that it's pretty interesting the stuff that they could do, <laughs> you can right? Ignore everything we just said. <laughs> you can ignore it, or you can love it. I'm gonna choose to love it, but yeah, yeah. We <laughs> okay, three days. Three days. Three days. All right. So we'll move on to the next, and this is the final one we're gonna talk about because I think we could talk about this forever. Um, this is three screenshots, and this is of all the new armor abilities, the tactical package, and the support package. Um, and to run you down, what? So I'm gonna just talk about the new things we've seen. Uh, we see a regen field, which I'm assuming will work like the Halo 3 green aura, but I've heard, you know, from various weird tweets that it's toned down. A hard light shield, which Nexi made a video of on our YouTube channel, uh, the Halo Council. And then a thruster pack, which I talked about uh, in, a, in a speculation video. And then in regards to the packages, Is we the have... thruster pack part of the support package? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I believe it's more tactical. I believe it's more tactical than that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but but so we see, you know, resupply, grenader, awareness, shielding, armor, ability, efficiency, and firepower. So, um, Ray, do you just want to talk about sort of what what do you think? Just give us your just go basically is what I'm saying. Uh, I'm kind of iffy on it still because. Like, something like this has always been Im implemented in the last two Halos. We had it in three. We had the, uh, what do you call those things? They had a technical equipment. name. Uh, equipment, yeah. And they kind of played out, and towards the end of Halo, it just kind of became just a power drainer and bubble shield. Now we have Halo Reach, and everything's kind of getting taken out, not just competitive, but also for casual gamers. So how are they going to work it so it actually sticks around and is good for us? That's what I'm worried about. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think that's just a balancing thing that needs to happen, right? So, it is. like, if something's not... Well, I talked about... I feel like I've talked about everything. But, all right, so yeah. there's a game out right now. It's a fighting game called Skullgirls. And it's basically the guy who made it. It's an Xbox Live Arcade game, so it's, you know, indie or whatever you want to call it. But his design philosophy is he makes everything strong. And instead of nerfing things, he just makes the things that aren't as strong stronger to, to build up on it. So I hope that's a similar design philosophy that went into Halo 4's abilities so that nothing is useless. That's that's my main thing. Yeah, and, like, I'm pretty open to the ideas of, like, the hard light shield. Or, is that what's called? The hard light shield? Yeah, hard light yeah. shield. Yeah, like, could you imagine a CTF game maybe – two guys running with flag and with those in front of you if you're running flag that'd be kind of or an cool. assault like you're you have your hard light shield guy in front of the bomb carrier uh you know <laughs> stuff like that it, it, it opens it, up so many more strategies to the flying know, like, beast. Using, like a drop shield and now or something like that it opens up so many more strategies yeah yeah, yeah. are doing more useful things in, instead of mickey stuff per se from like reach yeah. with uh what was it, Jet? I don't know, Jetpack was kind of useful, but you know, the other ones that didn't work out. Like the, uh, yeah, you have like Armor the Lock. Re well, Armor Lock being, you know, broken. Yeah, Armor Lock, game. yeah, Armor Lock broke the game completely, but they're also the getting things shield. that don't slow down the gameplay, yeah. per se. Like, I could see the shield, you could say that slows it down, but I think it enhances the gameplay. Yeah, I think the way that Hard Light Shield is implemented right now, it's probably the best version of, say, the Bubble Shield and Armor Lock we've seen as far as 
like the it it makes me the most effort. hopeful that there's yeah. balance to it is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Um, yeah, I'm I'm all for adding extra elements as long as there is a strong counter for it, mm -hmm. and it, it it's balanced basically. I mean, I think it will make it a lot more interesting. It will produce a lot more strategies, just things up. Like I don't think players should be afraid of elements, but as long as they're balanced and they don't. As, like like Ray said, as long as they're not gimmicky and there's like a solid foundation to them. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I hear the argument a lot, oh, we don't like Sprint, like Sprint Ruin Reach, this and that. But look at the way it's implemented in Halo 4 and a lot of people's arguments tend it's to contradict so much faster. themselves. Well, I think it looks smoother, and, and, honestly. Yeah, it does, It looks like it plays like, like really cool. It's like wow. a, a really yeah. like fast type of fluid, but then your shots are still important because it's not a fast, like, you know, 0.2 second kill and, and time like Call of Duty. It's it's fast, but it's important. That's what I, from what I saw, yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, itself doesn't break reach. It's like the, you know, weapon and map size and everything all surrounding together. And then I think the fact that, like, yeah, broken, but. that you give up sprint. So people say, oh, Halo has always been about starting on, like, an even footing, right? Well, then how can you argue against giving everyone sprint? That's your even footing. I understand that it, it complicates the game. It adds a new element. But if your argument is I want everyone to start at the same, you know, playing field, then it's kind of hard to disagree with sprint. Like, you have to you have to be on one side or the other. And would that people are, people are in their comfort zone. Veteran Halo yeah. players are in their comfort zone of no sprint, a certain speed, a certain weapon, and they don't want to break out of that. But the game does have to evolve and get better. As long as the core mechanics are solid and they're predictable, then that's competitive. Even if other elements are introduced, as long as you can predict how they will behave and there's a strong counter, that's still competitive. And so... Veteran handle players might have to get out of their comfort zone and accept that it's a brave new world. Yeah, I don't and know. And you might have to deal with it. And you might enjoy it more if you gave it a little bit of a chance. Yeah. yeah. I, I think... And, right, go ahead. And then I'm going to put everyone on board. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, the sprint in the video we saw today looked a lot better than Halo Reach's because in, when you play Halo Reach and you sprint, you're always in this, like, tunnel vision kind of sprint mode. You can't really dictate where the guy going and if you saw he kind of switched over real quick to the left when he was running which I thought was awesome yeah uh, the whole just... game from and and we'll get into the leak videos in our next segment but the whole game looks a lot more responsive uh, it looks like you can make decisions faster and the game will carry out those decisions faster everything from weapon switching to that but we'll touch on that later um, I want to call everyone out and it feels like so many people are just like setting hipsters like they have their <laughs> settings and their yeah. settings are better because it's, you know, their settings, right? And maybe it, it's a little better. <laughs> but in the grand scheme, like, what do you want, where do you want to see Halo go? Do you want to be, you, do you want to play your settings in a very small community? Or do you want to give a little and compromise a little and find some common ground in your settings? so that more people can compete and, and more people will be drawn in and the community can come together and grow. That's my feeling on, on everything. I, yeah, I and know. with that, we should always give things a chance. We shouldn't go in there and try and make it like Halo 2. Uh, that's not a slander on anyone, but we really should give certain things in the game a fair chance before we completely cut it. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think... I know what you're talking about, and we did that with Halo 3, right? We tried to recreate Halo 2's yeah, settings and competitive what, nature as best as we could. I mean, and Halo, Halo 3, 3 was a good... Oh, sorry. It was a good competitive game, but, like, certain things, like, if we had Forge in Halo 2, would they have taken out the sword? How much... Look how useful that was for competitive use on lockout. It was a power weapon. You had to control it. Yeah. Like, good there was a skill gap can... behind it. Yeah, exactly. I would love to see sword or shotgun in an LG. Like, my... Why is that not in there? Well, in the in the if you go to I our mean, website again, we're gonna pump the hell out of this. In uh, yeah. you know, APK yeah. has been yeah. put in charge of the you know version eight testing, and on the new version of Sanctuary, there's shotguns. Um, things are you know changed around. There's a little uh, more variety. It's pretty good. I I played a few games and it's good. And with effort, 
And with that, Frank, we also got Rally got announced this week, so it's a possibility that we could be there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. That's shit. <laughs> that's that's that. But yeah, I, I was gonna make a quick point on Halo Three. Halo Three was a very similar game mechanically to Halo Two, so attempting to recreate it made a little more sense. When we got Reach, that game mechanically is nothing like Halo Two, so to try to recreate Halo Two using Reach's mechanics uh, was a little iffy. And I think that for Halo Four, that game is nothing like either of these games. It's not like Halo Two. It's not like Halo Reach. It's got to be its own beast, right? Played as Halo 4, not as Halo 2. And you know what? I was thinking about this. That's why I absolutely love the idea of having to unlock your stuff. It forces you to play the game as intended, at least for a period of time, right? Uh, yeah. And I think that's genius. And if someone at 343, if that's the reason they did that, holy God, that's smart. Uh, because it forces you to play the game in its default state, to learn the game, you know, uh, learn the game's mechanics at its core before you can start to alter and mess around and unlock everything. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with that, I think we can end this segment exactly on the 9.30 mark, uh, unless, anyone has any, <laughs> unless anyone has any last words. God, yeah, I'll do that. Um, so, you guys have anything? Yeah. Final words? Final words? Oh, give Halo for Good shot. Give it a yeah. chance, man. I have faith, yeah. I have faith in Frankie. That's what I'm, <laughs> I'm praying. I'm praying for Frankie. Faith in Frankie. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, guys, we'll be right back. In segment two, we're going to be talking about the video leaks now, what we saw in those, um, and breaking those down and giving our opinions on it. Now, we're trying something new. The stream's going to go offline just briefly uh, and then come back on because we're segmenting the videos in a new way and trying to reduce the lag that can happen in our voices. So hang tight. I'm going to place the music. Stream's going to go off. Stream's going to come back on. There's going to be music. Everything's going to be fine. All right? We'll be right back, guys. <laughs> 